this is Caitlin with KMK Designs. Wow, it's been a little while since my last video for this. Um, if you haven't seen Corset Draping Part 1, I will link down in the description, as well as I'll probably put up a little caption bubble you can click on as well. So this is Corset Draping Part 2. This is for corset makers who have made a corset before or somebody who has some experience with sewing. This deals with heavy altering of patterns. It's actually creating a pattern from scratch. So you want to have some familiarity with patterns. So in the last video we left off, we had draped the pattern on a form, basically laying up the tracing paper that we had called Swedish tracing paper. You can get it from uh, wawak.com. There might be some other places you can get it. I will link uh, resources down below as well. So the first thing I'm doing with all the pieces that we draped is cutting along the seam lines. I usually don't add in seam allowance when I drape. You can add in seam allowance. I just find it easier to add it later um, and make the seam lines just exactly where you want them. Then I'm going to trace out every piece that I did, making sure the most important point is to mark where the waist is. And I do it with pencil because there's going to be a lot of erasing and correcting later with a hip curve and a measuring tape because it's probably going to be a bit sketchy when you start. So your tools for the next part are going to be a clear ruler, um, usually like a two or three inches great, and a hip curve. A hip curve is a curled ruler. Um, it's going to help you make your curves a little uh, easier to navigate and draw them a little neater so they become less sketchy and a little easier to actually sew later. You can also have a French curve which is basically just a smaller version of a hip curve but it has more kind of curly cues and stuff in it. You can usually either get them online or at you know Joann's or some sewing local sewing store. So here I'm actually using a measuring tape because I wanted to make sure that the top the notches were matching up because you have so many curves in a corset you want to make sure that when you're measuring the curve that it's going to the right place. So there I was trying to measure to make sure that my two notches were actually ending up at the same point that I had made. And that's really important too because you don't want to make your pattern and then have it be three inches too long on one side of your piece and then two inches longer. So here I slowed it down to show you what I'm showing. I actually got taught this in a great group on Facebook called um, to course it make like a pro I'll put a link to that as well because it's a really helpful Facebook group um, a long time ago when I was first learning how to do corsets but basically when you're doing the f center bottom of your corset you want it to make a V uh, you want to make sure that you're not flaring out at the bottom of your center front corset because that will help cup it in and kind of squish you know all the flub down there so it doesn't flare away from your body now after saying that, I will say that I have actually flared out the bottom of some corsets if I know there's going to be a poofy skirt under it, if I want to create some other sort of shape. But if you're looking to just uh, control like the tummy area, that is that V shape is what you really want to do. It can also depend on the amount of squish that you're creating or the silhouette you're creating. All right, so for this next part up here, I'm showing and doing a sweetheart neckline. Now for sweetheart necklines, I've noticed that you have to bring in the center front just a little bit, as well as that side, side front, center front seam at the very top. You just do it like a smidge. I've done it as little as an eighth of an inch and it does depend on the person's bust. When you um, do a sweetheart or even if you do a deep V-neck, it's because you're, putting things more on the bias, it's more a stretchy part of fabrics. Even if they're stiff fabrics, it just tends to gape, it tends to pull, want to pull away from the body. There's also, when you are boning the corset, you want to make sure that you're doing your boning in a way that it's not just straight steel, straight up. So there's a couple techniques, um, maybe later I can make a corset making video after a corset draping video to kind of show more into that. So there I was marking the under bust line. That's important for where you want to take in the corset under the bust. If you want a lifting look to your bust, so it's not just like squished against the body, which is a diff can be different looks. It really depends on the silhouette. But if you want to cup over the bust and lift the bust, the under bust line is very important. You also want to make sure you mark things like the center front, the top and bottom corset pieces can sometimes be a little confusing. I even myself have flipped a corset piece. So you want to make sure that you mark the top and bottom, you mark which piece it is, you mark which pattern it is, um, anything like that. Here I am taking my hip curve and I'm just evening out my lines. So I might have kind of had them a little bit sketchy before. So now I'm making sure that they make sense, that they're not just 
kind of wibbly wobbly. All right, I'm gonna speed up the video a little bit again because now it's just going to be going in there and looking, making sure that the sweetheart neckline is the line I want in the center front. And this is all just the first piece. So this is the very center front piece that I'm working on still. And then I'm gonna go in and add a half inch seam allowance. Now, if I want it to be on the fold so I don't want any front closure, I don't need to add a seam allowance to that center front, obviously. But on here, I think with this one, we were doing a busk, so I added a, a half inch seam, seam allowance on there. So I'm just going back through, marking a half inch all along the lines, making sure I still have all my curves the same so my seam allowance doesn't mess up any of those lines I created with the V, and then taking it in the top for the sweetheart bust line. All right, so now this is a close-up of the finished first piece here with the half inch seam allowance in the center front as well as the side front seam. And you can see all my markings, making sure it's piece number one, this goes up this way, here's my waist seam, um, all of that stuff. Now you can see here that I wasn't quite satisfied with how my half inch seam allowance affected that under bust line, so I just went back in with my hip curve and I changed it just a little bit. So I'm just going back and I'm making sure that all my seam allowances didn't mess anything up because in a corset, especially the more pieces you go, the easier it is to mess it up because the more pieces you have, every little small mistake can add up really quickly. So say if you have like seven pieces, that means you have 14 seams because it's pretty much double each seam. So then a small issue or a small thing that's off 14 times is a big deal. And with a corset, you don't really have a lot of room for it to be off because you're trying to alter the shape of somebody's body generally with a corset. So you can't really have like it be super off in the ribs or off in the bust because then it's not going to work. Like a quarter of an inch 14 times is a lot. Or even a sixteenth of an inch 14 times is a lot. All right, so another thing as I'm starting to make the other pieces, I don't do this as much with the center front piece just because you're not really wanting to compress your center front that much, but you're gonna have to start thinking about going into negative ease. A corset deals with negative ease. You can't just make a corset the same size as your body. It won't do anything. So you have to kind of think about how much space you want in the back. So generally for a corset between two four inches is kind of pushing it but like two to four inches is like a decent space in the back so you have to think of that you also have to think of how much you want to compress your body like the easiest part to compress is obviously underneath the ribs at that natural waist point and it depends on the silhouette you're creating how much you can compress or how much the person corsets or you corset or you know whoever is going to wear that corset plays a big part in how much you can reduce it. So generally I found if you're a little bit more plus size, um, probably like above a size 12 or 14, you can actually reduce more. Um, and also it can depend, like people actually have like denser flesh, I know that sounds weird, but I've had people where they can compress really well, they can corset really well even if they haven't corseted before and then I've um, worked with people where their just bodies are just denser and I don't know if it's necessarily muscle mass or what exactly it is. Um, I think some of that has to play into it, but that's just something to consider. So you have to start thinking about how much negative ease um, and you can't take it all out the same in every place. Like you can't take out the same e negative ease in the bust. You can't take the same out in the waist. So I generally like start with the waist and then I try to think about like the person I'm doing. So like whether that person has like a big bust or they tend to carry most of their weight in their back, whether they have, they're a pear shape or an apple shape can really depend on where you're squishing their body. So like a pear, you wanna make sure that um, you're putting the flesh more down because that's where it's gonna wanna go anyway. For an apple, I tend to leave a little bit more rib room because they can't generally, they tend to squish just evenly up and top. Sometimes you have to lengthen the corset at the top if someone is bustier or if they have um, either, well, also a taller torso. But even if they are more of an apple, sometimes I've found that you have to lengthen the corset just for there to be more room. Like you're compressing, but you still have to think about where it's gonna go. The flesh can only compress so much, so the more like you waist train, it's really just shifting things around. So you have to think about that when you're doing the corset drafting. Okay, so I re-put in this part of the video because I just wanted to show what I do while I'm doing the corset 
patterning is I actually write down the amount that I'm taking out of I do inches honestly it's probably easier to do a centimeter so if you use centimeters use centimeters because it's easier than point inches I'm just stuck on inches so if you have that advantage use it um, that just it's easier to keep track as you start like adding up how much ease you're taking out and you have to make sure that you're multiplying it by two each time because each of your corset pieces you're making you're gonna do on both sides so you need to make sure that you take that into account all right so hopefully you're still with me after all of the info dump so starting on the next piece the side front piece or piece number two because there's probably gonna be more than just like a four piece where it's the center front center back side front side back there's gonna be more than that many pieces you can do a corset with that many pieces but it is a little harder to control the shaping with that so if you want a more dramatic corset more pieces generally is easier all right so in this one I'm doing the same thing at that side front seam as I'm taking out a little bit down at that at the bottom of it to make sure that it cups under the tummy um, I'm also right now I'm cutting out my finished front piece my number one piece because I'm going to use it to walk along the seam that I want to make on the other one to make sure it matches up so walking seams is something kind of known in pattern making where you're basically taking each of your seam lines and walking them to make sure later when you put your seams together they're not totally crazy off um, I usually just use like a pencil and I just like you hold the pencil and you kind of shift and move it I'll see if I actually do it in the video um, but you can also use an awl which is just like a big pointy metal stick thing um, you use for all sorts of things in sewing um, just to make sure that they all line up and that your notches are lining up that your waist is lining up and if not um, if you need to alter your corset and make it taller or shorter usually I go taller especially for the first draft because it's always easier to cut down than cut up um, you want to make sure that you match them up at the waist and then lengthen from there so you don't want to change where your waistline is that's really important I've made that mistake in the past and I'm saving you from it because if you change where your waistline is it's gonna just make your corset pattern just not work um, so you need to make sure that your waistline on all your pieces is where you start all your changes from so you start that and then as you go up you're gonna lengthen up or lengthen down but not move your waistline so I hope that makes sense all right, so I'm just pretty much doing the same thing here, taking out a little bit, making sure all my lines here. I'm walking it. You wanna make sure that you're walking it on the seam line and not the seam allowance line because it actually, a half inch out really alters how it is. So you wanna make sure you're lining up your seam lines, not the half inch that you put into it. Um, and then I'm making sure all my notches match up. If I do any like, if you take out or add any curve to your corset, like if you're taking it out of the waist, it is gonna change the length of it. So it's fine to do. I generally try to do some of the alterations before I walk it and then see what I need to do after I walk it. So if I like take in the waist and it shortens it, then I lengthen it or add more to the ribs if I feel like I'm taking too much out generally. And one thing I did wanna say is that even though some of the things you can like you know math out I will f I find that bodies are so different in the way that they cinch and the way they act to corsets that you're gonna always have to do a mock-up so if you're not quite sure like following everything I'm saying don't worry about it do the best you can make a mock-up you're gonna learn so much from actually making the mock-up from it and trying it out that it's gonna teach you so much on like how you need to change things and what you need to do then all right, I'm going to stop this video here. I promise it won't be so long till the next part. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Leave a like or comment down below if you have any questions. I do want to put a disclaimer that there's so many different ways to make corsets, and this is really my way to do it, but there's so many other different ways you can also do it too. Um, if you want to support this channel or support the art we do and more tutorials, check us out on Patreon. Link in the description.